So previously we have checked our qualifications on Anabin's website and now we're going to apply to the Shrink Colleague through UniAssist. First, before applying to UniAssist, we're going to see the list of the Shrink Colleagues in Germany and here in studentcolleagues.de. So if you've decided on which course you want to study, you can see the list of all the Shrink Colleagues that provide this course on this website. Here we have the Bundesland, that's the province. And then we also have the colleague Nama, the name of the Shrink Colleagues in this province. There could be more than one Shrink Colleague in the same province. And the entrance exam or the ANP are usually held on the same day. So you have to choose which one you want to attend. Next, we have Strat, that's the city. In the status, you can see there are Uni and FH. Uni is like the normal university and FH is also like university, but there are more practicums. So after STK, you can either apply to the university or to the Fachhochschule. Both are good and you can study master after university or after FH. So there's no such a big difference between both of them. And the information about Uni and FH is not really important here. What's important is Stadtlich and Privat. That's the type of the student colleague. Stadtlich means that it's provided from the country. We can say it's like a public college, but Privat means private college. From the subject itself, both of them are good from the quality, but for the fee, it costs a lot more when we go to private college. I've said it before, like the private Azteca costs up to 5,000 euros for two semesters, while the public one costs only around 600 euros. It costs a lot more to go to private college but it's like our second option if we're not accepted at the public one. Next, we have course. That's the types of courses that are offered by this college. And you can see there are MTVGS. We've talked in details about the difference of these courses, what kind of subjects we study and what majors we can study in the university. So if you haven't checked the video yet or you're still confused, about the differences, you can check the second video on the series and you'll see the information in detail. If you scroll down, you can see all of the student colleagues, but there are some private student colleagues that are not listed here, so you have to search extra on the internet. So there are two ways to apply to student colleague. First, we apply it directly to the university, and second one through a portal called UniAssist. So you have to do a lot of research on which university or which student colleague needs a direct application and which one needs to go through the assess because it's actually a bit different from each semester. As an example, I applied to student colleague Hamburg through direct application, but now it's from uni assess. What I know the student colleagues that still need a direct application is Mainz because they have their own portal. Now we'll open the UniAssist website. To see the homepage, we'll click here, start site, and then this is the page you'll see. I'll show you in German, because I assume you can do it in English. So I'll show you the harder one, and it's in German. First, we'll see the checklist on what to do, and then first, then, that's the deadlines, and then you'll see facts, most asked questions, applying the college and universities and then webinar so first thing first we have to register and make an account we'll see here in my access you have to click and then here you can sign in so if you already have an account you can sign in but we'll start and make together a new account here on create new account First, you type in your email address, your passwords, and then you have to click on Agree on the terms and conditions. If you want to know the details, you can click and read here on terms and conditions, but if not, we can create new account now. We have created an account and then for the activation, you need to click on the activation link that's sent to our email address. 
So here you have to click the link and our account is now activated. And then we have to sign in to our account. So after we've successfully signed in to our account, we have to fill our data. Like what I've said, we can choose between Deutsch and English, but I'm going to show you in German. So first, personal data. Geschlecht is gender. Männlich, male. Weiblich, female. And last one, diverse. I'm going to click based on my point of view. So it's a female. Vorname is the first name. Well, Nachname is the last name. And then Namen to Satz. If you have extra information like the name Van. So I'm going to type in random names. I'm just right about studying in Germany. And then if you see there's Geburtsname, it's also last name. So what's the difference between Geburtsname and Nachname? It usually applies to the married couples. In most cases, the female takes after their husband's last name and it will be their Nachname. So in Geburtsname, you have the chance to write the first last name you have that was first registered on your birth certificate. But I assume that you are freshly graduated from high schools and you're still not married. So it's not really important for you to type in any Geburtsname. You can just leave it blank. And then you have to go to the Geburtsdatum. Geburtsdatum is your birth date. It's a bit confusing here because whether you choose the English or German settings, the order should follow the German's way to read a date. In English, it's usually month, day, and year. But in German, it's day, month, and then year. So if you see in the box, they want it to be in English setting. But beside the Geburtsdatum, it states in German setting. It's a bit confusing, so I suggest you to click on the calendar and then choose it manually. So for the date of birth, I just choose one randomly. And then after you've input your date of birth, you also have to input where you were born, the city. And uh, um, I just type in Jakarta, it's the capital city of Indonesia. And then Staatsangehörigkeit is your nationality. I'm going to type Indonesian. Here you can see Staatenlos. It means that you don't have any nationality. And then the second one, it says that I'm an immigrant. So there are those extra options. And if it applies to you, you can click on them and then click next. On the second page, they need your home address. So if you see there's CO, you usually need it in two cases. The first one, you're still in your own country, you're not in Germany. But for the application, you need an address in Germany. So if you know someone in Germany and they're willing to give their address, you can write their name as CO. The second case, you're already in Germany, but the place where you live doesn't have your name in the mailbox. And it could be a problem during the delivery of documents. So in the CO, you'll write your landlord's name. We assume that we're already in Germany and have our own address, so we can leave it blank. Now we're going to type in the street's name, comma, the house number. Address to such is an extra information about your address. It could be anything, but the most common one is on which floor you live. So in Germany, the ground floor is called Erdgeschoss, shortened as EG. It's a bit different if you use the American English. The ground floor is called as first floor, second floor, third floor. But in British English, you say that ground floor, first floor, second floor. It's a bit different. But the German way to say it is like the British English, ground floor, first floor, second floor. So if you're using American English, it could be a bit confusing because after you climb the stairs, you'll reach the second floor. And in German, it's called as Erste Obergeschoss, shortened as 1.og. 
and the third floor is called as Zweite Obergeschoss 2.0G. I'll just write the second floor which is Erste Obergeschoss 1.0G. After the extra informations, we need to type in our zip code that's postletal. After that, we have Stadt, Province, Region. It's the city and then the province. And lastly, the country, which is Germany, is called as Deutschland. After that, you click next. And here on the last page, you need extra information. So the first one is, do you have any UniAssist account number? But here we are using a new account, so we don't have any. We can skip that part. And the next question is, are you married to one of the AU citizens? And we're like freshly graduated from the high school, so no, nine. And then the third question is, in which language do you want to be contacted, German or English? We assume that for sure in Kulik, we already have B1 certificate language, or better B2, and we are ready to be contacted in German, so we click on Deutsch. And the next part is information about the OSV. So there are some majors in the university that are very um, controlled. I mean by controlled is these majors are very popular that a lot of students are going to apply for these majors but the seats are limited so they really have to make sure that there are no free seats left and the majors are usually medicine, pharmacies, veterinary and dentistry. I'm going to show you a bit. We search hochschulstarts.de and then you'll see this website. So usually the Germans, if they want to apply to the university, they use this website. But for us, the international students, we use another website, this UniAssess. We only need this hochschulstart.de if we want to study these DOSV majors like medicines, pharmacies, which I said before. We need to apply to get this register number, this account number. And then you have to insert your Hochschule Start account number, this DOS file, to your UniAssist account. But uh, I'm not going to talk more about it now because we only need it when we want to apply to the university. But now we're going to apply to Shrink Colleague. So it was just an extra information about the DOS file, but we don't need it now. We can add this DOS file account number later after we finish our Shrink Colleague and about to apply to the university, so we can leave it blank. And now we'll click effort the terms and conditions. You can read it here. And if we're done, we click on save the application. After we finish with the personal informations, we're going to add informations about our education. First question is, have you finished your school? And then I'm going to click yeah, we finish our high school and the next question is in which country where you graduated from school uh, I'm going to type Indonesia after that they ask another information about the type of the diploma um, in Indonesia it's called ijazah I'm going to click on the most common one it's ijazah sekolah menengah atas but if you choose another country, you'll also get another type of diploma. So it really depends on which country you choose. So you can choose it depends on your situation. And I'm going to click again um, the one that I did. Ijasa. After that, the next question is, have you finished and wrote the exam of the student colleague? I'm going to click 9. No, because we're going to apply for student colleague here. The next question is, have you studied in the university in your country um, with a minimum of three years of university? And we click on no. This part is important for the one who wants to do master in Germany, but we are going to study for bachelor so we can skip these questions. And then there's a question about test AS. Test AS is an IQ test that you can 
do in the universities and this IQ test could give you extra points when you're applying to the university but you can do it later after shooting Kulik. You don't have to do it now. You can do this test during your shooting Kulik when you have free time or like what I did. We have holidays during shooting Kulik and I search for test AS that's um, available during this holiday season. So after you graduate from Shirin Kulik and you want to apply to the university, you can give this uh, test a certificate as an extra point or in some universities, I think one of them is Aachen, they need this as your requirements to apply. With no test AS, you cannot apply to this university. So test AS is very important and then you have to make sure that you take the right test AS the students from M course, T course, G course, and V course, they have different kinds of test AS. So you have to make sure that you choose the right one. I'm going to make another video on this test AS so we can skip this part. We click on close. And with that, we have finished our registration in UniAssist. And in the next video, we're going to go through the steps on how to apply to the student colleague.